right, so this is going to be a video on how to disassemble these CB650 carbs. Um, the purpose of this is just kind of like a follow along guide um, for you guys. Um, you know, if you're going to be doing this yourselves. Uh, one thing I can recommend is uh, during this process, take a lot of pictures um, so that you know where everything goes. So um, these are carbs that were pulled off of a CB650, um, 1980s, I think early 80s. Um, the bike was not running. Uh, we pulled the carbs and there was no fuel in there, so which leads me to believe that it's really gunked up in there. Um, these carbs were pretty gross when I pulled them off. Um, there's a lot of gunk on there, so I sprayed some carb cleaner on there, wiped it off. So this is actually in a lot better condition than it was when I first saw them. So, uh, first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to pull up these hoses and just kind of make a note of where they were. And then flip the carbs around. So over here we have our float bowls. And that's where uh, the fuel gets dumped into and controlled with a float, which we'll go over later, and all the jets are. So we need to get rid or take out these screws, loosen them up. So what we're going to need is a screwdriver. So when we're doing this process, it's important to keep the carbs on like a nice clean surface like this, preferably white so that you can see um, what items kind of fall out and it's easier to retrieve and things aren't rattling around all over the place. So one thing I noticed is that these uh, carb bowl drain screws, they're pretty, uh, pretty tight on here. They look a little bit rounded. And if I just take the screwdriver and try to so, yeah, I, it feels like I'm going to be stripping these. So what I'm definitely going to need uh, to help this process out is this uh, impact driver. Uh, this is a manual one, not one that with like a power drill or whatever. These are pretty cheap at like a hardware store. So it's really quite simple. You just kind of, I'll, I'll try to zoom out here. There we go. That might be a little bit better. So we're going to take the impact driver just kind of set it in here into the screw like that and you're just going to take a hammer tap it a little bit and you'll see the screws easily come out so we'll just repeat this for uh, all of these yep it's just rotating right out so you can even use it on these uh, these screws that look a little bit stripped. Yeah, even those are coming out easily. So this is a worthwhile tool to have. And then now you could just take your regular screwdriver and pull these out. and kind of keep everything together. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat this entire process with the impact driver on all four of these uh, car bowls. All right, so as you can see here, I have them all loosened up. But I'm only gonna do one of these uh, carburetor uh, assemblies at a time. I just don't wanna get anything uh, mixed up during this process. So what I'm going to do is pull off these uh, screws, keep them uh, over here handy so that they don't get lost. And then the bowl is just going to come right off. All right, so we're going to first start taking a look at the float bowl itself. So. Um, this is where the fuel uh, gets dumped into by the uh, carburetor float. Um, it pulls up to a certain level in here. Now there is a uh, rubber uh, gasket in here. Uh, it looks to be in good condition. I don't see any uh, tears or rips or anything like that. So I think that's good to be reused. Um, over here we have our drain over... Uh, drain screw that's the word I was looking for and uh, what we're going to do is get a flathead screwdriver and uh, yank this item out 
uh, what we're going to want to do is get all the screws out um, and put them in carb cleaner and make sure that they're all uh, nice and clean, no uh, uh, gunked up carb residue on anything. All right. This isn't the uh, right screwdriver to use for the job, but it's the one I had on hand, so I'm just going to use that one. So as you can see, it kind of looks a little bit on the filthy side, so definitely going to want to get that cleaned up. And here's our uh, float bowl. Just going to keep everything together there. So I know where everything goes back together again. Alright, looking back here at the main carp assembly, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but I'll try to boil down some of it. So. Over here, it looks like we have our uh, floats over here. Now, this looks, this operates kind of like a uh, toilet uh, flapper assembly to kind of stop the, the flow of water going into the uh, toilet bowl. So basically what happens is when the carbs are empty of fuel, these things are uh, dropped like this from gravity. And then as fuel gets dumped into the carburetor float bowl, these things get pushed up and it pushes this little uh, needle valve over here and shuts off the fuel once this gets to a certain point. Um, and that prevents the carb from getting uh, over flooded with uh, gasoline. And as you use more gasoline, the level drops and then these open up again to allow more, more fuel to get in. So looks like these are plasticky looking uh, floats. So these, I don't think that these are adjustable. So I'm gonna leave these as is. Next item to point out are these uh, brass components over here. These are uh, the jets for the carburetor. And basically um, through a lot of physics and uh, vacuum and different like ports that the, the fuel goes into, um, the fuel goes into different uh, jets based on the position of the throttle. So there's one for when you're idling, uh, just off idle, uh, mid-range in the throttle, and then pretty close to wide open throttle. So these are brass little screws that have a bunch of holes in them that can get easily clogged with old gas as it varnishes. So uh, if a bike's been sitting for a long time with some old fuel in it, it's always a good idea to take all these off, uh, disassemble them, clean them, make sure that they're nice and clean, uh, all the holes don't have any uh, blockages in them, and reassemble them. So what we're going to start doing is uh, taking each of these apart one by one. Now one thing I do need to caution you guys about is uh, when you're going to be messing with these, these are made out of brass, so they're very uh, fragile. You don't need to be like wrenching on them like pretty tight, otherwise the uh, little slots over here are going to get uh, warped and bent and possibly broken. And it's kind of hard to find replacements, so be very careful with these. But this should give a much better view of the... Uh, carburetor jets. So what we're going to do is take a, a normal screwdriver and start unscrewing these guys. And then this one, we can just rotate this, and it'll just fall right out, along with a couple screws. Just joking that those are the screws for here. I just made them overly loose. So I know for certain that this is the uh, slow jet. So this is the one for idle. And I believe that this is the main jet kind of assembly. So notice that um, there's this big kind of like diffuser tube looking thing and then there's a separate little screw and jet up here. So what I did oh. is uh, put this guy in these vice grips and just used the screwdriver to break up the tension. There we go. On this guy. Unscrew it out.
All right, so we've got the holder, the little diff emulsion tube out, and then we've got the jet over here. Honestly, this one looks pretty good, but cleaning always helps. Yeah, this one looks a little bit uh, gunked up, so we'll get that one cleaned out. So just in case you're wondering kind of like how this whole float assembly works, I'm just going to disassemble it for this one car for demonstration purposes. Uh, I'm not going to do this for the rest of them because I don't want to mess with like any uh, settings here. But basically there is a little uh, 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 pin over here that gets pulled out. And that, uh, that has the uh, floats rotating against it. So this comes out completely. And now this just gently lifts out. And as you can see here, there's kind of a little jet assembly there. And up here on the float there's this kind of little torpedo looking thing and so basically as the floats go up and down this little needle goes into here and plugs the uh, the fuel from uh, dropping into the float bowls so to get this thing back in you just reverse the steps so make sure that oh, there we go this comes out completely it has this little groove that it uh, rests on that just easily slides into the uh, gap there in the floats there we go just set that right back in there and slide this pin right through and there we go all set so additionally we're going to take apart the uh, top little diaphragm assembly so I've already taken the impact driver to the tops of this one so uh, just to make it a little bit easier so these come right off. So I believe that these are CV carbs with a, kind of a rubber diaphragm in there with a spring. Um, just got to be a little bit careful when taking this thing off because the diaphragm tears easily and I think that they're a little bit uh, expensive to uh, replace. So already getting some pushback from the spring. All right, so we'll just set this off to the side with the uh, screws left in place here. Okay, here's our diaphragm spring. We'll just pull that out, set this up to the side. And then here's our diaphragm. So um, what we're going to do with this thing is gently take it out. Um, so one thing, oh, I can make a note of is there's a little index tab over here in the uh, rubber. Um, which kind of fits into a recessed portion of the uh, carburetor body right over here. So when you replace this diaphragm back into place, you want to ensure that um, this little index tab sits right in there. So we're going to very gently separate the outer ring of this uh, diaphragm from the carburetor body. Okay, and just slowly pull it out. Here's our carburetor slide and our needle. So what happens is when you uh, roll on the throttle, there's a, a, I think a, a pressure vacuum that gets generated and then this uh, throttle like goes up and opens up this uh, this needle passageway here in the carburetor and allows the uh, the main jet fuel to uh, go into the engine and uh, increase the speed. Now I don't know if that's true or not but um, that's just me talking. So what we want to do here is check to see if this uh, rubber diaphragm has any uh, rips or tears. Actually this one looks to be in uh, very good condition. So we're just going to leave this one as is. 
kind of wipe it down and uh, set it off to the side. And over here, um, there are a couple of uh, jets that look like that they're press fitted into here. Um, I don't think I can remove them with a screwdriver and I don't want to mess with uh, any of the settings there or like having to punch them out. So I'm just going to leave them as is. Might spray some carp cleaner in there to uh, get them cleaned out. Um, but yeah, these are just going to remain as is. And what we can do is just kind of wipe down this area, make sure it's nice and clean. We don't want to get any sort of uh, dirt specks um, in there, which could clog up any of the jets. All right, the next step in our cleaning process is the uh, infamous dunking of uh, our carburetor parts into carb cleaner. Um, I like using this stuff. Uh, you can get it at any AutoZone or O'Reilly's, what have you. Basically, it's a big jug of... Uh, uh, cleaning liquid or whatever just gets rid of the uh, the varnish from old gas on parts so comes with this little strainer basket take the jets like I remember uh, one carb at a time just kind of throw them in there and then why not uh, we can also kind of dip the uh, the bowl in there just a little bit um, what I prefer to do is uh, ensure that no rubber parts stay in this stuff for very long so because this just kind of looks gross I'm just gonna kind of dunk it in there a little bit for a couple seconds and then clean it right off because the uh, the get I don't want to purchase a gasket kit uh, for this because it looks to be pretty good so I'm just gonna kind of dip it in there for a little bit stir it around and then we're just going to rinse this off with water. And already you can see it looks quite a bit cleaner. And you'll, you'll notice it'll look a lot better once we uh, rinse it off. So the jets I'm going to leave in there for uh, maybe about a half hour. And then likewise I'm just going to dip the needle in. But not get the diaphragm in there. Alright. So to be continued. All right, it's been about a half hour. I'm gonna take our parts, our parts out. And then now I'm just going to rinse these with water. Okay, so here we have our brass parts all cleaned out. Um, so I uh, took those out of the carb dip, had them rinsed off with water, blew some compressed air on them. Um, if you don't have an air compressor, you could just kind of, I don't know, blow with your mouth, I guess. And uh, just making sure that all the holes inside, there you go, are uh, see through. See if I can get that on camera here. Yep. And also right through here. That might be tougher to show. Yep, no blockages. And then we're uh, going to go ahead and start reassembling. All right, we can start off with the easy part first. Just gonna go ahead and uh, clean out where the slide and diaphragm are gonna go. There we go. Once again, making note of that index mark here and the index mark here on the diaphragm. Careful not to uh, bend the needle. So this will just pop into that hole over there. Okay. Once again, we've got our index mark here lined up at the car body, and then we're just going to lightly press down to make sure that the lip of the diaphragm goes into the groove of the car body, just like that. We're going to take our spring, put it right in there. Then take our the top. Now make sure that the little index mark here, 
corresponds with this index mark here, so this is oriented correctly. We're just going to place that right down there, just like that. Then we're going to tighten up our screws. So we're going to start reassembling the carburetor here. So got our emulsifier jet over here and then this one over here screws into the top. Just like that, doesn't have to be too tight, but let's give it a nice little turn there. All right, and then this emulsifier jet combo kind of goes into over here where this uh, the needle is of that uh, diaphragm slide that we just inserted into the top. I don't know if you can see it in there. So we'll just kind of insert this slightly in there, lining it up with the needle, and then just turning it in until it just starts to get a little bit of pressure. And we're going to use a little 8 millimeter. Oh, that's smaller than that. Oh yeah, I forgot, this is like 7 millimeters, but we could just turn it by hand. There we go, nice and fine. And then next we're going to put in our um, slower idle jet over here. With our drain bowl, we're just going to take our plug screw and just screw it in all the way, nice and easy. And that's it. Ready to be uh, put back on the bike. Now one thing I would recommend is uh, with these old uh, screws that are on the uh, the tops of the diaphragm cover and the float bowl uh, securing screws, these kind of got rounded from uh, trying to remove so it might be a good idea to replace these because the next time that you get these off you're probably going to have to use an impact driver again and eventually these heads are just going to turn into crap. Lastly we're going to put the bolt back on. Just got to make this uh, profile match this one. Pops right on there. And for now we're just going to be reusing these old screws. Alright, so we've got the first one done, now we just have to repeat it a bunch more times until we get all of the rest done.